Colormaster TD500 mesh has been a pretty popular case since it launched a few years ago. Hardware moves pretty quickly in this industry and case manufacturers have had to keep up. So Coolermaster has launched a new version of the TD500. They've called it the TD500 mesh V2. But is it as good as the original? That's what we're here to find out. So in this video, I'll be reviewing the new Cooler Master Masterbox TD500 Mesh V2, which is this case here. If you've seen the original TD500, you're looking at this and probably thinking, well, it doesn't look any different. It doesn't look much different, but there has been some subtle changes. This is available to purchase now. You can get it in either this black color or in a white version, and you can pick it up from places like OC UK for around £100. The official price is 99 95 it is available to purchase now it features a 3d polygon effect mesh front panel it's the cooler master fine mesh so it doesn't have any additional dust filter behind the front panel acts as a intake and also as a dust filter it also comes equipped with three cooler master cf120 argb fans same fans as you got in the original case and it also has the crystalline tempered glass side panel so these accents on the side of the front panel kind of continue onto the side panel and continue that design along like the original version you can fit two 360 millimeter radiators inside the case so the changes between the original let's call it the v1 and this v2 the v2 is a little taller than the v1 it's about 30 millimeters taller cooler master has added a usb type c to the front panel that's a good addition the top panel now is removable as well so that will make it easier installing radiators and hardware into the system the power supply shroud now has a little window on with a cover that's removable so you can either have the window open and you can see the power supply logo or you can put a cover on and uh, cover it up not sure that's such a interesting new feature but it's there also the power supply shroud now is full length as well so it spans all the way from the back to the front of the system before it was one of those that just stopped and allowed space for the radiator instead there's a cutout on top of the power supply shroud and the radiator slides down inside that cutout so in terms of specifications the case is a mid tower atx case quite a narrow case at just 210 millimeters wide but it is quite tall it's 500 mil tall and more or less 500 mil deep from back to front at the front of the case you've got this 3d polygon effect fine mesh vented front panel so that should allow for good airflow into the system this panel is removable it has the front io up there power buttons up there as well there's also a single uh, 3.5 millimeter audio connection you have a button on the front as well to control the rgb lighting and as well as the type c port you also get two usb 3.0 type a ports on there and as i say this front panel is removable so just give it a pull from the bottom and that comes out and as you can see mesh in the center there and there's no other dust filter in front of the fans behind the front panel these three cf120 argb fans they are controlled and connected to an argb fan hub that comes with the case tempered glass side panel with that pattern on the side it comes with a single thumb screw in the top it's not captive but then it's also on like a quick release uh, pin system so you just push that and then it lifts out and there's a very slight tint on that tempered glass you can probably just see it there it's only a very minor tint the motherboard tray will support up to e atx form factor motherboard so that includes mini itx micro atx standard atx motherboards and e atx there are several cutouts for cable management there's three up the center of the motherboard tray that have grommets on several at the top and several other cutouts on top of the power supply shroud you'll also notice on top of the power supply shroud there's a vent so potentially you could install your power supply with the fan either facing upwards or downwards as i say three fans come pre-installed in the front but there's no fan installed in the rear which is a little bit of a shame because I always like to have some kind of exhaust fan at least in the rear of the case. I mean, you can always remove one of these fans from the front and put it into the rear, but kind of ruins the RGB effect for me. It looks better with three fans at the front. So if you do need a rear exhaust fan, you will have to pay that extra. So you're gonna have to factor that into your budget when you're buying this case. 
you can fit up to two 360 millimeter radiators in this case now with some cases they say that but you can't fit two radiators at the same time that are 360 millimeters but with this case you can i've tested it you can install a 360 mil rad at the front and still get the other 360 mil rad at the top of the case which is good because modern hardware especially cpus now need more cooling that means potentially you could put a custom loop in this case with two 360 mil rads or potentially you could have a 360 mil aio radiator installed at the top and then maybe run a hybrid graphics card that has a 360 mil cooler and put that into the front of the case as well so worth bearing in mind that there's good cooling support from a relatively compact case the maximum cpu cooler height you can fit inside the td500 v2 is 165 millimeters tall maximum power supply length is up to 200 millimeters although cooler master recommends maximum of up to 170 millimeters i think that is because of the hard drive cage which is repositional and the maximum graphics card length is up to 410 millimeters which sounds really healthy Sounds like you will be able to, in terms of the length, fit any of the modern graphics card from NVIDIA and AMD inside the case. But with the case only being 210 millimeters wide overall, it means that from the motherboard standoffs to the tempered glass side panel, it's about 175 millimeters. Now, doing a bit of measuring and calculations and talking to Dominic, who does the graphics card reviews for Kit Guru, that sounds a bit tight for NVIDIA 40 series, especially if you need to use the 12 volt high power adapter cable that comes with the cards. If you have a new power supply with a 12 volt high power and you don't need to use the adapter, you might be able to fit them in. But with the adapter cable, it sounds really tight. We worked out that the average 4080, 4090, the average height of them is around about 150 millimeters. And adding the adapter probably adds on another 30 millimeters. So you're looking at about 180 millimeters tall there. Maximum you've got here before you've installed the motherboard is 175 millimeters. So that might be a bit tight. Flip the case round to the back and at the back, it's pretty much standard layout at the top. You have a uh, fan mount here for 120 mil fans. You can't fit a 140 mil fan in the back, only 120. In the roof, you can fit two 140s or three 120s and the same in the front as well. You can fit up to three 120s in here or two 140s, but at the back, it's just a 120 fan mount. Also, you've got the rear IO cutout, seven PCIe slot cutouts. Technically, there's no vertical GPU mounting but Cooler Master does sell an accessory which means you remove all seven PCIe slots and then it's a bracket that fits in there so potentially you could vertically mount using the Cooler Master accessory and that comes with obviously a PCIe riser cable as well and then down at the bottom you can see it's just a standard power supply mount power supply installs from the side panel and screwed into the back and then this is the little cover over the power supply shroud window that I was talking about you can just Pop that off it goes flying across the table you can either have that open and you can see a potential logo on the side of your power supply or you can just clip that back in place and then that's covered up not really something i like to see that it doesn't look that neat i prefer if it was just covered up personally but that is personal preference and the front of the power supply shroud has this cut out to allow radiators and fans to pass down there more radiators than fans because this case you can install the fans on the outside of the front panel so you only really need to put the radiator on the inside which saves space inside. A feature that I do like about this case is the removable top so all you need to do is take two screws out of the top, that one's gone, take one out of the other side, that's saved and then the top does come off. As I say in here you can fit up to 320 mil fans or to 140 mil fans, or a up to a 360 mil radiator. Obviously, that also includes uh, 240s, 280s, or even a 120 radiator. And also on this top panel is a magnetic dust filter, and that just removes simply. It's just one of the fine mesh dust filters, and then the 
panel is quite heavily vented on the top as well so you don't need to run that dust filter if you've got a radiator in there or fans in there blowing out it's absolutely pointless having that on because you've got a really open top anyway and dust isn't going to come in while the air's blowing out that's pretty much everything you need to know that's new or changed or that's the same in this side of the case if we flip it around you can see i have got a couple of thumb screws for this other side panel these are captive thumb screws and then it just slides out and that's just a standard plain steel side panel got a bit of flex into it no sound ending material or anything on that it's just a standard plain steel panel and then around the other side as usual you've got various cable management again you can see the slots here with grommets on several cable management holes up at the top and eyelets for strapping the cables to down the side more eyelets for strapping the cables to there and then below again various cutouts and then in terms of the depth for the cable management here you've got about 19 millimeters from the motherboard tray to the side panel so that is okay it's not the best but it is sufficient couple of 2.5 inch mounts in with the accessories you get some screws and uh, grommets for those to mount the 2.5 inch drive straight there then down at the bottom it's a pretty open power supply shroud there's enough space to get the power supply in from the side and then screw it in at the back then this caddy at the bottom this can hold two 3.5 inch drives it's got a screw that holds it in place it is a captive screw but it actually gets in the way a bit that screw so it's actually better if you remove it because you can install this in two positions so that's the front position i suppose if you want more space for a thicker radiator you can move it down slightly to the second position which is there but then obviously that slightly hampers the space you've got for your cables and your power supply or alternatively if you don't want to install any 3.5 inch drives take this out completely and that opens up the bottom of the case and then around this side of the system as i've already mentioned is the fan controller so this is an argv controller and a fan controller so the fan power connects to these as you can see these are three pins so these are dc fans and also the rgb connects up here so this is argb three pin five volt there is an additional one so you, if you do want to buy another one of these cf120 fans put it in the back you've got another space there for the fan and then another two spaces for the uh, rgb lighting so potentially you add another rgb fan you can connect that up to there and then if you wanted to add an rgb strip or something like that you have got another port you can connect that up to that is basically everything around this side it is a pretty basic case but it comes with a reasonably basic price tag as well and then if we just flip it over there are plastic feet with anti-vibration rubbers on the bottom and then at the back of the case there is a dust filter that slides out for the power supply i think that is most of the important features of the td 500 mesh v2 covered if there's anything i've missed don't forget there will be a full written review in detail over on kitguru.net with full specifications features more pictures and the charts for the thermal performance that we'll see later they'll be on there so head over to kitguru.net check that out if you want to see more details of the case also bundled with the case came this accessory this is a cool and master gem this came bundled with review samples it won't come bundled with retail versions of the case so if you want to buy this you have to pay extra for it obviously and it is just a bit of an accessory from cooler master and it sticks to the side of the case got very strong magnets on it and it is like a headset hook or hook or whatever to hang your headset on you can wrap your cable around it and it keeps things neat and tidy i believe as well if you uh, go and have a look on the cooler master website there's other parts you can 3d print for this and maybe use it to put other things on maybe like a cup holder or something like that i think i heard it it holds up to two kilograms so you could probably rest a pint of beer or a vodka and orange or something on that as well so nice little uh, nice little accessory there from cooler master it's always nice to have somewhere to hang your headset because you often just end up leaving it somewhere on your desk so this could come in useful i remember i think nzxt or somebody used to have something similar to this a while ago but this does look a bit more substantial 
that back bit comes off as well. You can see the magnets are really strong. You can actually pull the case over with it. So yeah, that's the Cooler Master gem. Uh, check out the gem on the Cooler Master website. Might be something you're interested in as well. So as I always say, the best way to review a case or to test how good a case is and what it's like to actually work within the real world is to build a system inside. For this system, I'm gonna be building inside the TD500 Mesh V2. I've gone for an Intel NVIDIA system. CPU for this system is an Intel Core i9-12900K. Motherboard will be this Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X. This is the DDR4 version. Because of that, the memory is a 32 gigabyte kit. So it's four by eight gigabyte modules of this XPG Spectrix D50 Extreme. This is DDR4, 4800 megahertz. Storage, I'll be using this PNY XLR8 Gaming CS3040. As I say, one terabyte. It's a PCIe Gen 4 M.2 NVMe. To cool the CPU, I'm gonna be using the EK Nucleus AIO CR360 Lux DRGB. Excellent all-in-one CPU cooler. And then the graphics card is this RTX 3080 Aorus Master. This is currently the widest graphics card I have available. I think it measures about 140 millimeters tall, between 130 to 140 millimeters. So that'll test out the theory of maybe struggling with wider cards inside this narrow case. So we'll see how that works and I'll have a look at that and visualize an extra 30 millimeters on there for a cable and see if we can get that in. So that'll be a good test for the case. And then power in the system is the Seasonic Focus PX850. So this is an 850 watt, 80 plus platinum rated power supply from Seasonic. So let's get on with the build.
So as you can see, the system's built up. It's up and running, everything's working as it should be, which is always good. It was actually a really nice case to build a system with this. The uh, alignment of components is good. No issues around the back with the PCIe slots or anything like that. Motherboard standoffs, all the fan screws line up really well. In terms of build quality, it seems pretty decent. There are some panels that feel a bit flimsy. It's really lightweight, the case. But when you get your system inside, it does feel pretty solid and pretty well built considering the price. So that's a good thing. And as I say, I didn't really come across any major issues while building the system. All the cutouts for cable management are all in the places where you'd expect them to be. One or two minor issues, which I'll come back to later. One problem or one slight problem that I did have was installing the AIO up at the top with this EK AIO on the end it's got a bit of a, a cover or a, a panel what covers up the tubing initially I wanted to have the tubing at this side but that wasn't possible because of this panel it was actually uh, contacting the rear IO cutout that is more of a problem with the cooler rather than the case I was able to spin it round but that would affect radiator placement at the front if you wanted to run two 360 mil radiators so that's something to consider but i think that would only be an issue with this cooler inside this case other than that it was a real pleasing build experience cooler master's got it pretty much spot on with the design of the case in terms of how easy it is to build inside i do have a couple of minor annoyances with the case which i'll come back and talk about in a minute but before that let's take a look at the thermal performance and as usual the test is a combination of the Cinebench R23 benchmark running in a loop and the 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme Stress Test running simultaneously in a loop for 30 minutes. With the 12900K running at stock frequency, CPU package power is around 205 watts. The Cooler Master TD500 Mesh V2 was able to keep CPU temperature well under control. With the case in its default configuration, average CPU temperature under load was a very respectable 50 degrees C delta. Removing the front panel had little effect on CPU and GPU temperature, but as we often see, removing the side panel offered a slight improvement in both CPU CPU and GPU temperature, but adding a rear fan had no positive effect on the thermal performance. So in its default configuration, the case flows air well and is able to keep high-end components cool. As usual with case noise testing, removing the side panel lowers noise since the fan RPM is reduced due to the cooler temperature of the components. With the case in its default configuration, noise output was measured at 51 decibels, which could become a little distracting for some users. Manually tuning the the fan curve may be required to keep noise output at a more comfortable level. So in terms of the thermal performance, it's looking good for the TD500 Mesh V2. The mesh front panel is obviously doing a good job of bringing it in the cool air and then it's able to expel out from this open top panel. Remember this is a pretty high-end system as well that's being cooled here, so anything with a lower spec shouldn't have any problems at all. So that's looking good. So let's get back to what I was on about earlier, and I said I'd come back to the couple of minor issues I have with the case. It's mainly due to the dimensions of the case. So at the back, you've only got 19 millimeters of space for cable management, which is the bare minimum. With this relatively basic system, I was able to manage the cables pretty well, but the 24 pin cable is very close to the side panel. If you were to build a uh, system with more drives or needed more power cables or any fan controllers or RGB controllers in the back of the system, it might get a bit tight in there. You might be struggling unless your cable management is on point. And staying on that theme of the dimensions of the case, because it's only 210 millimeters wide, as I said earlier, you might be struggling with certain NVIDIA 40 series cards in this case. This Aorus RTX 3080 is 140 millimeters wide. You can see the power cables are just two normal PCIe cables and they are actually set back from the edge of the card. Even in that setup, the cables are very close to the tempered glass side panel. Put the glass side panel on and you're talking about five millimeters gap between the cables and the tempered glass. So with a wider card, which a lot of the 40 series cards are, and if you need to use the 12 volt high power adapter cable, you might be struggling with space there. The cable will more than likely be pressed up against the side panel with certain cards. So if you are thinking of buying this case and you are thinking of using it with an NVIDIA 40 series card, 
just check the dimensions first of the card and the case check that it's compatible. The only other slight issue I've got with the case is the RGB control. Currently I have the uh, RGB connected up to the motherboard, the hub that comes with the case is connected up to the motherboard and I'm controlling the RGB lighting effects with the motherboard software. You can see I've got it set up in a static Cooler Master style purple. Now with this kind of setup, normally if you hold the button in on the front panel for a few seconds, the hub will switch from the motherboard control to be controlled by the switch but this doesn't seem to do that and I can't seem to figure out a way of switching between motherboard control and switch control the only way I seem to be able to do it is to unplug the RGB lighting from the motherboard and then I can use the switch and scroll through the various presets patterns using the RGB hub so I don't know whether there is a workaround for that, whether it is possible to use either, but I seem to be only be able to use either one or the other, and I can't switch between them easily. So just a couple of minor niggles, nothing major that would put me off using this case again. Cooler Master seems to have got it right in terms of the airflow and thermal performance. The price is about right as well. There are cheaper cases on the market which offer similar features as the TD500 Mesh V2, but it is a not a bad looking case. Works well with high-end components and it still is in that budget price range up to a hundred pounds. Changes between the V1 and the V2 seem to work well, especially this removable top panel. I found that useful when installing the system. And because the case is a little taller than the V1, it does give you a bit more space up at the top for connecting cables. And there's a decent amount of space between the cooler and things like the RAM and the VRM components. So overall, it's not a bad case. If you're looking for something in this price range, it might be worth taking a look at. So thanks for watching this review of the Cooler Master Masterbox TD500 Mesh V2. If you've enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you like what we do here at KitGuru and you wanna help support us, you can always head over to the store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you wanna catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.